So near the beginning of the year in chemistry class, you're very likely to go through chemical versus physical properties and chemical versus physical changes. Okay? And your teacher is going to speak very confidently about there's this line that we draw and these things are chemical and these things are physical. The huge glaring problem with that is that the line drawn is not a straight line. The line drawn looks more like this. There are things that define chemical changes and there are things that define physical changes and they're extremely inconsistent. There is no consistent answer that says, well, if you just draw this line, everything on this side is chemical and everything on that side is physical. The problem with that is that there's really no purpose to chemical versus physical changes. When we get into the higher industry levels, nobody sits there and says, oh, well, this is a chemical change. We know what chemical reactions are, but we also understand that the, the motion of charged particles and all of those things can be, can be different. And, and chemical changes are different from other chemical changes, and physical changes are different from other physical changes. And some kind of toe this line, and some really don't. Some of these toe this line, and some really don't. And so this is really a bad pedagogical thing that we do, that we still teach chemical versus physical changes. Now, just so we're all clear, some things that get said that involve both. Breaking bonds. Breaking bonds is definitely not unique to chemical or physical changes. Likewise, making bonds. Okay? And really, I mean, you get into salts. You melt a salt, that's a physical change, but you're breaking ionic bonds apart. Uh, if you make a precipitation, you're making ionic bonds, and that's a chemical reaction. But if you were to freeze a salt that was liquid, that would be making ionic bonds, and likewise, that would be a physical change. And so, so teachers tend to start off by saying, well, it makes a new substance. And then the problem is, well, what's a substance? Uh, and so that definition doesn't work very well. Uh, you know, if you melt something, it's different, but it's somehow the same. And, and if you do a reaction, the parts are still the same, but now they're different. And so it's not a good line to make. Now some other things. People will talk about light and energy being given off. Okay, there are a lot of physical processes that give off energy or absorb energy and light. And some chemical do not involve very much light emission or energy emission. Some of them are quite tame for that regards. So again, we're looking at a kind of a situation where you're looking at a spectrum. And we're kind of saying, all right, well, here and here are chemical and physical. And, and for the, the person who's looking at that and saying, well, what about this huge overlap here? I think you're on kind of to something that's, that's important. Now, with all of that said, I do find that there is one thing that does distinguish chemical versus physical changes very nicely. It's not perfect, but poison. Poison is a very good way to think about, is something a chemical or a physical change? Okay, so here we have the quote from Paracelsus, everything is poison, there's poison in everything, only the dose makes a thing not a poison. And that's a great concept that we don't spend enough time on in chemistry, we're teaching you about things outside of chemistry class, that, that the amount of poison matters very much. Eating a very small amount of poison is not dangerous. Okay, now, for chemical and physical changes, if we then go through, what could you do to a poison to alter it before you had to consume it? So if you have to consume poison, obviously not an ideal position, but if you had to consume it, what would you do prior to consuming it if you could change one thing about it? If you do a physical change, you are still going to die from that poison. So assuming we're giving you a lethal amount of poison and you have to consume it, physical change would do nothing. So what would be a stupid choice to do? Well, I took my poison and I cut it in half. Okay, I shattered it into pieces. I melted it and then I drank it. Okay. None of those things are changing the poison, and so therefore you're going to die. Chemical changes have a potential. Okay, so not all chemical changes will, will change the structure of the poison enough. Okay, but some will. Okay, so if we look at something like hydrogen peroxide, hydrogen peroxide is poisonous. If you pour, if you get a cut, you pour it on your cut, and the poison in that. The, the poisonous aspect of that will, will kill bacteria, and so it prevents you from getting an infection. Okay? Hydrogen peroxide is, is a poison. If we get that to undergo a chemical reaction where it decomposes, it turns into water and oxygen. And ignoring the fact that these are, of course, poisons at extremely weirdly high dosages, this is much more likely to cause you, you know, uh, a harm than, than these two. And so by undergoing this chemical change, I have changed the properties of this in a way that is now significantly less toxic and much safer to, to, to partake in. 
there are of course exceptions to this. Okay, so if we were to look at, you know, you were going to look at a mercury salt, and you have mercury nitrate, and you you put that into solution and you and you mix it with the chloride, and you end up making mercury chloride. Okay, well the mercury is the principal component here that's that's the toxic action, and that's not going to do that. That's not going to affect the toxicity. It will change the toxicity level, okay? Uh, but, but you're still probably going to die in that instance. However, we are affecting those things. Uh, and mercury, you know, one of the things you could do with mercury, if you could reduce it to mercury metal, that's significantly less interactive with your body, and that might be significantly less damaging and could be the difference in living and dying. So for poisons, that's the separation. Now, how do you look at that in specific examples? Okay, physical changes, you're, you're breaking something, you're melting, you're doing phase change, and then dissolving. So the question is, if I gave you a soluble poison, and then I put it into water to dissolve it, would you drink that? And the answer should be no. You know, and I understand that, of course, no one would want to do that, even if it were safe. Uh, but dissolving, okay, when you dissolve something, it still has the same chemical properties. If you take salt, sodium chloride, and you dissolve it in water, and you drink that, you still have that same chemical interaction with your tongue that's giving you that salty taste uh, or reception in your brain. And so dissolving does not change that property of that substance, even though this one kind of toes the line between, between chemical and physical. Here we have bonds being broken potentially, sometimes not. Here we have a change, you know, this, this interacted with light this way, now it interacts with light this way. Uh, we have, you know, ligand formation it's, and all kinds of stuff going on in this that really makes it tough to distinguish. And so we've settled on this is going to be a physical change based on reversibility. Again, that's a problem because chemical changes, a lot of them are reversible, and physical changes, if I tear a piece of paper in half, it might not be simple to put it back together. Okay, would you drink a glass of poison dissolved in water? No, therefore we're going to put that into physical change. Chemical changes are going to involve chemical reactions. So burning is a very common one, and there are codes for burning, decomposing, or, or cooking, or digestion, okay? And, and all of those are chemical reactions, okay? And in addition to that, if there's a saying such as, you know, this, this chemical reacts with this chemical, then we're looking at a chemical change. These have the potential to, to change a poison. If you think about it for a second, when you cook something like raw chicken, you take salmonella, and, and by heating it, you, you change that chemical into something else that is significantly less harmful to you, okay? Um, and so, so these situations all involve potentially modifying a poison in a way that might prevent you from dying, okay? And so I think that this is a very good way to sit there on a tricky question. Maybe on a test someone says something like carbon tetrachloride dissolves in toluene and you have chemically sounding names but the word dissolve and so you can use the poison as kind of a backdrop to be able to answer those questions.